Yo, what's up? It's your bro, Sir Roger Oxford. In this video, I'm pretty much going to talk about how bad and poor the relationship and the romance between Denorsi Targaryen and Jon Snow truly was in Season 7. Alright, in my personal opinion, I believe the r romantic um, attraction towards um, Jon Snow and Denorsi was extremely rushed. And it just didn't fit the narrative of, of Game of Thrones and George R. R. Martin's um, original story um, storytelling. I think the relationship should have been um, handled in a political a political sense of, or a political point of view in general. And this is pretty much how it should have went down. Okay, um, I'm gonna start off how it should have went down, and then I'm just gonna talk about the errors of how the you know the show writers did it. All right. How the relationship between Jon Snow and Daenerys Targaryen should have went down. It should have went political. In season 6 of um, Game of Thrones when Daenerys said her farewells to the leader of the um, Stormcrows. Um, the sellsword guy. And she she gave him, she pretty much um, gave him the position of, of the leader of um, the, the last remaining city. That was under the North Sea Targaryen's rule in Slaver's Bay. And she had to leave the guy because um, she, he wasn't a political match for her. She even admitted that she needed a match. She needed to be with somebody that could give her army in Westeros. And also strengthen her claim to the Iron Throne if she actually achieved it. Okay, so now we're going towards her how they should have did her relationship with Jon Snow. When Jon Snow first visited Dragonstone, instead of Denorsi kneel, um, demanding Jon Snow to kneel to her, she should have also um, bring in an opportunity of a, a marriage pact due to the fact that Jon Snow is the king of the north and he was proclaimed king of the north. And he had an army and his army and his rule was the north and the north is is said to be the biggest continent in westeros and to the full and pretty much be like put all the other all the other kingdoms into one so like the north like so they shouldn't approach it in a political um a sense where the Nazi, um promoted uh and also gave a suggestion of a marriage pact with Jon Snow and even allowed him to keep the title of the King of the North the same type of approach that Ren Renly did with Rob Stark when he t when Renly told Kathleen Stark that she, that he would allow Rob Stark to keep his title of King of the North but he would still have to bend the knee so what they should have done to be a, a to ally him against like um the pretenders and also take out the Lannisters from the Iron Throne, so they should have did a similar um a similar situation and also a similar proposal where the Narsi will allow Jon Snow to keep his title of King of the North, but he would still have to bend the knee to her and also offer a marriage pact to her. That way, even though she allows him to keep the title of King of the North, if if he has an heir, like if she actually delivers a child by Jon Snow, then that that child will still have claim to the um the North. So boom, it would have been a Southern Kingdom. And another situation in Caesar Southern when um Tyrion had a discussion with the Narsi Targaryen about having a proper heir and Knowing that the Narsi was barren and she couldn't produce children due to the curse, ma the, the blood magic, it's obvious that the Narsi would have not only would have should have like um not should have um named Jon Snow as her heir to the Iron Throne when she dies, and or his descendants, you know, for his loyalty and his army, and. 
that's what they should have done it they should have done it in a more of a political approach and they should have made it obvious when Denarcy even made the claim to her, her counsel about the marriage proposal with Jon Snow and, and later on in season 7 of season finale before Denarcy and, and Jon Snow had sex their last discussion with the council she should have proposed a marriage pact with Jon Snow making it obvious to, to, to strengthen the, the North Alliance but they didn't do that they just showed Jon Snow simping for the Norsi Targaryen which was ridiculous even though it was obvious that Jon Snow he lived a life as a bastard so he didn't fulfill his sexual urges the first chick that he actually had a romantic relationship with Ygritte and he actually he actually kind of did had like a marriage a marriage with Ygritte because the way he 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 he, he won Ygritte was the same way that was the traditional custom of the of the um, violence of their marriages so even though like you know Jon Snow should have been in a situation when he he, he went crazy for Daenerys Targaryen and Daenerys um attraction to Jon Snow not only by his fame of being a Lord Commander raising from a, a, a bastard to Lord Commander of the Night's Watch to the King of the North and his victories against um, the House Bolton and um, regaining the North and also even defeating the Wildlands and saving the Wildlands and also his good looks because in um, A Dance with Dragons in the fifth um, A Song of Ice and Fire book when on the Narcy and POV chapter when she masturbates um, she actually does think about a, a young a young man with black hair and the description is actually Jon Snow so I think it's more than just an attraction and now I'm about to hit to theory um, category which is probably going to you know attract a lot more people's interest and what's pretty much um, I believe that Jon Snow and the Narcy Targaryen attraction is more of a magic thing and it got to do it got something to do with Quave, the um the sorceress from Quaff. And um because in the Dance with Dragon, the um the Narcy has like a vision dream with Quave and then, you know, when she's like masturbating she describes Jon Snow's appearance and just the immediately attraction between her and Jon Snow. Not just because of Jon Snow's good personality and the fact that he's a warrior and he's still a good man, but also the fact that they're just strongly attracted to each other. And it also got to do something with the Targaryen genes. And one of the main reasons why the Targaryens still interbred and with with each other is because they do have like a strong attraction to each other. It's just it's also like something to do with the blood, the blood of House Targaryen and also just like the magic because I think that it's a it's a candle it's a glass candle that's a that's making an illusion in the attraction of Jon Snow and the Norse Targaryen and me an obvious approach I don't think the Norse Targaryen is the reincarnation of Nisi Nisi it could be the Red Woman Maserati or even Sansa Stark so they could also fit the description of being a reincarnation of Nisi Nisi. And I believe the reincarnation of Azora High is in fact Jon Snow due to the fact that R plus L equals J, J theory was correct and Jon Snow strongly fits the description of the the la of the um the prince that was promised. And it's not the Norse Targaryen whatsoever. Speak your bro so Roger Oxford, please give me a like and describe.